So today, guys, we're going to service my Range Rover Sport. It's a L320 model, uh, 3 litre V6. So I've got the parts here. I'm going to fit all these and show you guys how easy it is to do it without having to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds at a an independent or a Range Rover specialist. All right, so here's the part numbers that you'll need. So this is the volume filter. This is the air filter. We've got the oil filter here as well. And here's the oil that I'm using today. So I'll show you how to get these fitted and hopefully save you a fair bit of money at the garages. So guys, we're gonna start with the cabin filter or pollen filter. Uh, all you need to do is get to the glove box here. And on the, the side here is uh, two little latches, one that side, one that side. Kind of push them in and then that will drop down which gives you access to the pollen filter so just push that down which releases the clock the little latch there okay and then under here we've got this bar here and that's where your pollen filter sits it's very easy to open you literally pull this there's a little tab here so you just literally pop it and it will come out I said nice and easily, but like that. there's nothing holding it on it. It was just, I was being an idiot. So there's the clip. There's the one that holds it in there. Okay. And you can see I've got the old pollen filter there. So to get it out, you just slide it down. So this little lever here, you just pull it out. So this looks fairly filthy, actually. Um, so yeah, it looks like that hasn't been changed in a while, which is a bit annoying. So let's compare it to the new one. Let's get the new one out now. So, as you can see, fair bit of difference. <laughs> um, yeah, so the only thing you need to make sure you do is you need to um, fit it where the flow is coming in from the, the top. So the flow comes from down here and out the bottom. So you need to make sure the flow is fitting down, basically exactly how you removed it. So push it in and then put it up. Um, that's how you fit it. So let's, let's do that now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide it back in into the hole like that. Make sure it's all the way back. And then we're gonna just give it a little push just to snug it up okay okay then we just refit the the mount the, not the mount sorry the cover which is easier off camera than it is on camera two thousand years later that's all back on there now trust me it's really easy when you're not recording you literally just pop it in that side and then clip it in up here and that's it really is that easy guys it'll take you 10 minutes if that no tools required um and yeah save yourself a lot of money i think the filter itself was about 19 pounds you could get the cheaper ones but i just chose to stick, stick with a man because man is generally land rover equivalent quality so uh, i didn't really want to skimp out so guys just need to replace the air filter now uh, it's a very simple job to do. There's a few Phillips screws that you undo. Um, lift this part up, slide it out, slide the new one in. Just show you how it's done. So there's a few Phillips that you can see along here. Uh, again, nothing, nothing complicated. So let me crack on and I'll show you how it's done. Don't need to worry about the screws coming out too much. They, they, they're captive in there, so they won't fall out anymore. Okay, you should be able to lift that off like this and pull the new one out. So I'll just quickly show you. So you should be able to lift it up. You've got access to your air filter there. Uh, it obviously helps if you've got two hands 
and I'm holding the camera, so I'm only got one. So, yeah, just pull that out from there. So we've got our filter. Yeah, that's fairly dirty. I'm not sure how much the camera can pick up of that. It's fairly dirty. Let's compare it to the old one. So here's a new filter. Again, man quality and product. This is a Crossland one, which is okay, but in my opinion, not the best quality and certainly not for Range Rover as many things are manufactured by man um, from the form factory for OE quality for Range Rover. So, as you can see, fairly dirty with the old one and with a nice clean one with more OE OE quality. All right, so I'm just going to get this slipped back in exactly the same way as it came out. Before I do that, I just want to check there's no leaves or anything inside. Nope. So let's get this one slipped back in. I'm just going to do that now off camera. So I've got two hands and then uh, bring it back when it's done. And it's literally as simple as sliding that back in. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure it's seated around here and around the side. Otherwise, we don't want to trap it in. So just give it a good push and you'll feel it click into place. And that's it. Do those bolts back up. Let's just fit this back on. Exactly the same way as we undone it. Right then, just about to do the oil filter. I've got five litres and a one litre and the oil filter. Uh, and I've got some brake cleaner here just to clean up any oil spillage. So I'll just show you how to take the cover off, we'll do the oil filter, take that out, and then we'll do the drain the oil. Right then, so the first thing you need to do to get this cover off here is undo the oil cap, and then you should, it's just on rubber prongs, you should just be able to lift it up. So to get the oil filter off, I'll just show you where it's located. It's that big plastic cap there. It's a 32mm socket you need to undo that cap. Excuse the paint on the socket there. But a 32mm, straight onto the top. It'll fit lovely. And guys, when you do this, make sure you've got a rag and a bucket to catch the oil filter in. Because it can be messy. So we're just going to crack that open. It shouldn't be too tight. That oil filter is now free. We're just going to lift it out and we're going to leave it to drip in, back into the oil to empty. This way we'll get less spillage, but we've got our trusty towel if we need it. Okay. So straight into the bowl. Let that drain off. So I'm just going to remove this filter here. It should just slide out. I'll get the filter off. Just use a pair of pliers just to help get it out. Because it can be a nightmare like that. Don't need to worry about the old one. Just remember there's a nice cage in there. As long as that's not damaged, you're perfectly fine. Okay. We've got the new filter here. You can see that. It's got the new man filter here. And that's just going to pop straight back in the same way the old one came out. Okay. So, new one in. Like so. I'm just going to push it all the way down until it clicks in home. Okay. That's that one done. And then in here, you've got a little oil seal. In the kit for the, with the new filter, you get a new one. And every time you do it, you want to make sure you replace that O-ring. We don't need the old one. We've got a nice new one. We've got a fresh bit of engine oil here. I'm going to do it. We're just going to run this around the seal. All that does is helps the seal from being pinched when you tighten down the oil filter cap. 
So run that round. Just make sure that's nice and evenly coated. And then, nice and simply, just run around the threads. Starting quite close to the top. Push it around. And then roll it down. And then just get your fresh oil. And just run it around like that. Just to make sure. It's all nice and coated. Okay, so we're going to set that to one side. I'm going to clean it up, set it to one side, and we'll drain the oil. This is where the brake cleaner comes into. Give it a good old blast. A little rag, just give it a good old rub. That'll break up all the oil contaminants on the on the plastic. If you don't, done. Just need to do the under tray here. There are a series of 13 millimeter bolts. Be careful when this drops, guys, it is really heavy. So we've come in to drain the oil now. So we have our drain plug here. Um, but I think if you've seen any other videos, when you undo that, it's going to splash against the cross member. So, to avoid doing that, we're going to undo this return line here, which actually sits lower than the, the, sump, the sump drain. So, we're going to unplug that, it's just a simple push in and pull out, uh, and then the drain the oil, and that way there'll be no mess. So, let's just do that now. And hopefully we'll be able to do this with no mess. I'm just going to move the camera slightly so I can get my bowl underneath it. But just before I do that, the practice is to just give the thing a clean, the brake cleaner. Just stops any oil, any dirt going back into the oil when you flip it back up. So just give it a good clean. Plenty misses. The best thing to do. So, I'm just gonna push in here and pull it out, okay? And then push it to the side slightly, and there we go. So, it won't be the fastest drain in the world, but believe me, it's gonna be the cleanest and it's gonna get more oil than it would do if we had the drain plug. I'll let that drain, and then I'll get you back when it's done. 2,000 years later. You just need to push the pipe back in. And now to do this, you're gonna get two clicks, okay? So, first one, can't hear it, but it felt it. And the second one, you should hear it. There we go. So that's now really sealed back on there. And it's a good time just to give another quick clean of the area, just to make sure everything's nice and clean and free of oil and debris. Okay, and that's done. So now we're just going to replace the oil filter and fill it up with oil. So we've just tightened that back up and we're just going to fill up now. Around five and a half litres and then test the oil and then add if I need to. Okay, so that's five litres in there now. And I've got a one litre bottle here. Same oil. And I'm going to put about half in to about there. There we go. A little bit more than I thought, but around half. Okay. Now we're going to start the car. Let the oil circulate around. So now we've started it, confirmed everything's working fine, no leaks. We just need to fit the covers back again. So we're going to take the oil filter off, oil cap filter off, filler off, and slide it into place. Okay. There we go. 
I'll put the gap back on. Job done. So now we've done the service, we just need to reset the service interval indicator. Uh, to do that, ignition on and off, open up the bonnet, open up the driver's door, and then put your feet on the accelerator and brake for 60 seconds, holding it there. And then after six seconds, remove it, close everything, wait two or more minutes, turn the ignition off, and then hopefully that will reset the timing, and we're gonna do that now. So, just gonna start the car. Turn it off. Put the valve up, there we go. Open up the driver's door. And then ignition on. And put our feet on the brake. For, and put our feet on the brake for 60 seconds. And you notice after about 60 seconds, the bonging will stop. I don't know if that's an indicator or not, but it seems to have to stop after 60 seconds anyway. So I leave this for two or more minutes with the ignition off and hopefully that will reset the service indicator. I'm gonna check the oil, oil level now, see whether we need to add any more than our five and a half liters. So I'm just gonna put the ignition on with no foot on the brake and let the message for the ignition on cycle over. I'm just gonna clear that. And I'm just gonna go through to the service menu. Oil level display. And you can see there, the oil level is around halfway. So that's after I've taken out for a drive and a parked flat, and I've left it for 10 minutes. So that, that's, that's a really good level. Anyway, in between min and max is the perfect oil level. Um, and which is what we've got now. So we don't need to add any more than the five and a half liters that I added. So we're all good to go. Job done.